I see a couple hands coming up, so let's let's maybe pause right now and uh, answer some questions. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The question is: Earlier, I mentioned there would be a board of directors, and you all, as members, would have appointed board of directors, and the board of directors would have a management company. How does that work, and who pays for it? How many of you own stock in a company? As a stockholder, as a stockholder in some of those companies, let's take uh, let's take. Uh, Let's take Microsoft, for example, or Ford Motor Company. Bad example, sorry. Dollar thirty cents. Let's take let's take an oil company. How about that? As a shareholder, every year you probably get something in the mail, right, asking you to vote on appointing a board of directors, or you can buy more shares. You can do a lot of different things. Your corporation would work very much the same way. The only difference is, instead of owning a very small piece of a huge global corporation, the difference is there would be exactly 165 votes in this corporation, and each household gets one vote. Every year, you would elect a board of directors. And that board of directors would have officers, like a president, who would run the meetings, a vice president, a treasurer who would maintain the finances, and a secretary. Your, your board of directors, though, doesn't do everything. And they can't do everything. They need, they need the assistance of professionals as well. They need the assistance of a CPA, an accountant, property management, someone to service the pool, all the same things that, that right now a park owner does, because a park owner doesn't come out and collect rent checks every month, and the park owner doesn't come out and, and supervise the guy who's, who's perhaps trimming the bushes or cleaning the pool. Those are all things that your board of directors will continue to use the same professionals and the same service providers that you do today of course, you have the right to, to always review contracts, and perhaps you want someone different, or, um, or you want something done a different way, and that's perfectly acceptable because that's your choice. Same thing with the management company. Same thing with, with on-site management, I would say. And, and the on-site managers would then, um, instead of reporting directly to the park owner, would report to the co-op board and would still have the same very important function that they serve today, which is to help run the park on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, who pays for that? It's paid for, it's paid for out of your monthly dues to the co-op, which is exactly how it's paid for today, through your rents. Your rents today are going to pay for the bills, the, to keep the lights on, and the insurance, the cost to clean the pool, uh, the cost to trim the trees, uh, the cost for insurance and everything else, property taxes. Your rents are going towards all those costs right now. The only difference is that as a resident of a corporation, your rents now are going for all those costs and to really pay yourselves. Question is, question is, how do we plan on determining the acquisition cost? Um, I don't know what the answer is yet. <coughs> What I do know is that we have to back into that number because the acquisition cost is going to drive ultimately the amount of financing that the co-op can get. And the amount of financing, of course, can only be as good as whatever it appraises for. Because we can't, let's just pick a number. Okay, let's pick $8 million. Let's say the park is worth $8 million. Let's say the park owner said, well, that's nice, but I want to sell it for $50 million. That would, that would probably mean that your rents would go from, what are average rents right now? Too much, I hear. Uh, $400. That would mean that rents would have to go from $400 to $3,000 a month. I'm pretty sure that everyone would say, no, thank you. I can also guarantee you that a lender would never make a loan because a lender is going to want to have an appraisal of the park. Let me take a step back and explain. Good question. 
For any of us who have been reading the newspaper or watching the news recently, I'm sure you've seen that some of the financial institutions are having some difficult times right now. So you might say, you might say, well, how does this whole thing work if, if this co-op has to go out and get a loan? Who's going to ever loan money to us? And at what rate? We're a bunch of seniors within this park, and um, you know, I might not have the best credit. Who's going to lend us money? I hear that question a lot. I've got a very good answer for it. Let's go back to the type of type of co-op we're talking about here, and that's a limited equity housing co-op. A limited equity housing co-op is designed to maintain affordable housing. Because of that, the federal government has said, HUD has said, lender, if you make a loan, I will guarantee that loan. And the lender and the federal government has said, even though most banks down the road, like a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America, might only loan you a little bit of money in relation to the cost, we're going to loan you up to 95% of the purchase price. And on top of that, where another lender might charge you 7 or 8 or 9%, we're going to lend to you at 6.5%. And those are just those are based upon today's rates, which are, of course, always subject to change at the risk of sounding like a commercial. Um, of course, always subject to change. But the point is that because the federal government has said and recognized that as an affordable housing community, you serve an important role in the community, we will sponsor that loan. We will guarantee it, which means that any other type of of real estate activity in the marketplace right now, it's very difficult to get financing. Banks are being very tight with their wallets, and understandably so. Not so for this type of affordable housing ownership. And because you are a resident group coming together to buy your park, not only has the federal government said they're going to help you out, the state of California has said they'll help you out through a special program which is referred to as MPROP, or the Mobile Home Resident Ownership Program. And so, and so that sort of financing is very much available to help you if in fact it's something that you guys want to do. It's available to help you, and because the government is willing to loan most, uh, a very high uh, percentage of the purchase price, that means you don't have to come out of pocket for very much at all. The, how much is very much is like I mentioned. It could be you know five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred. I just I don't know at this point. So, and for low income, and let me let me finish up. And for folks who are low income, which I suspect is a good good number of folks within the park, there are there are programs to specifically assist folks who are are low income who can't even come up with that. So, yes, ma'am. Two quick ones. Approximately, how much is the law firm's fee, and exactly who is your client? Yeah. 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 I'll I'll say it again. There um, there are seats available up here if you want. If not, perfectly comfortable back there as well. Uh, question number one: Who? Uh, what are our fees? That's confidential. Um, number two. But, but what I can tell you is it's not you guys if this is something you guys want to explore then our client is paying our fee our client is paying our fee and we will put together the housing cooperative and we will do all the work and come back to you to see if it's something you want to do second question is who is our client um, I our client is the park owner who is that and, and the and the park owner consists of a different different groups of investors. Who are they? Couldn't you name them? I, I, I cannot. 